Welcome to our COVID-19 media briefing. My name is Noraida Negro, I'm a communication administrator. Today we hear first from our emergency management coordinator and Laredo Fire Chief, Mr. Guillermo Hurt. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to our media briefing. Um, so uh, we are transitioning right now uh, to back to our normal state that we were uh, before March of 2020. Uh, the vaccination efforts continue. Uh, that is our our biggest uh, right now. That is our our where most of our effort is being focused on. We do have several partners in the community apart from the regular pro, uh, from the providers. Uh, Dishes uh, has several contractors in the city uh, and the National Guard, and they are working uh, directly with our city staff and we're coordinating our efforts at direct uh, targeted sites, uh, stores, uh, the flea market, the malls, uh, the baseball games, and we'll continue uh, uh, providing this effort to uh, provide vaccines to anybody that's that's able and willing to, because that is how we've uh, shown that we are defeating this uh, uh, virus. Um, we uh, we also we are also always continuously here at the EOC uh, monitoring the trends and looking at the active cases, always checking the hospitalization numbers. But but the numbers trend low uh, at the hot or hospitalization uh, numbers. We haven't had more than 15 patients total in the last uh, month and a half here at the hospitals, and less than five ICU patients uh, that we've had, which is very very uh, very good. Uh, that shows that the efforts that we're doing have uh, have uh, are working, um, and th and other than that, that's all I have to report on the COVID side. I just want to give a brief information for the disturbance that is happening at the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we are uh, here at the EOC. We are also monitoring that since hurricane season just began a couple of weeks ago. Um, it doesn't seem that there will be no significant impact to our city. But if there's any change, we'll be uh, we'll be sure to uh, advise the media and and advise the public. That's it from my side. Thank you. Chief, don't forget in Spanish, please. Uh, yes, I forgot. Sorry. Um, uh, seguimos uh, con los esfuerzos aquí en la comunidad uh, con los vacunas, que es una uh, cosa más importante que hemos hecho. Uh, una de las cosas más importantes que hemos hecho para bajar los números en nuestra comunidad. Ahorita estamos habla, uh, uh, trabajando con los community partners que con, con uh, que mandó un estado y en, en National Guard y también tenemos las vacunas en áreas estratégicas como uh, nos, uh, las tiendas, uh, los moles, las flea markets, uh, también tenemos las vacunas en los juegos de béisbol con los tecolotes uh, y también con los far, uh, las farmacias. Um, vamos a seguir ese esfuerzo porque todavía sab sabemos que hay muchos uh, gente aquí en nuestra comunidad que todavía no tienen la vacuna, pero vamos a seguir dando educación porque es muy importante que tengan la vacuna. Uh, también uh, seguimos siempre uh, checando los números uh, en equipo uh, aquí, checando los números de, act de uh, active cases y también nos, con los hospitales para saber exactamente cuántos pacientes hay. Y si ahorita desde mayo los números han estado bajos y no han subido. Pero siempre estamos nosotros vigilando para estar seguros que no vamos a tener otra surge en los números. Uh, ahora y también uh, también aquí en el EOC estamos uh, ahorita como comenzamos el, el la temporada de los huracanes. Uh, hay ahorita en el Golfo de México hay una tormenta que vamos ando uh, averiguando para estar seguros que no va a afectar nuestra ciudad. Parece que ahorita que no va a haber ningún impacto en la ciudad de Laredo, pero si hay un cambio, nosotros les vamos a decir uh, uh, right away. That's it on my side. Thank you, Chief Heard, for your report. Now we hear from Laredo's health director, Richard Chamberlain. Good afternoon, Noraida, and good afternoon, Laredo. We at the City of Laredo Emergency Operations Center will continue to work with our partners at Curative to provide COVID testing throughout the month of July. We are scaling down the number of city property testing sites. Testing sites will now be lo located going into the month of July at the following locations, at Father Magnable, Bridge One Downtown, and the McKendrick Library. Other testing curative COVID sites include Laredo College and TAMIU. Our county continues to be a leader in the percentage of persons who have received at least one dose 
and are fully vaccinated. Thank you to each person who has contributed to our high level of protection and low level of risk, but infections are still being reported, largely due to persons that are not vaccinated. We at Laredo Health encourage persons who are still hesitant to review the science and facts that vaccines are safe and vaccines save lives. Buenas tardes. En el Centro de Operaciones de Emergencia de la Ciudad de Laredo, continuamos trabajando con nuestros socios de Curative para proporcionar pruebas de COVID durante el mes de julio. Vamos a reducir la cantidad de sitios de prueba de, de, de propiedades de la ciudad. Los sitios de prueba estará ubicado en Father Magnable Park, Downtown Bridge One, and McKendrick Library. Otras ubicaciones de pruebas de COVID de Curative incluyen Laredo College and TAMIU. Nuestro condado sigue siendo líder en el porcentaje de personas que han recibido al menos una dosis y, y se han totalmente vacunados. Gracias a cada persona que han contribuido a nuestro alto nivel de protección y bajo nivel de riesgo. Pero las infecciones aún se reportan en gran parte debido a las personas que no estarán vacunadas. Alenta, uh, alentamos a las personas que han dudan a revisar las ciencias y los hechos y que las vacunas son seguras y salvan vidas. That is my report. Gracias. Thank you so much, Mr. Chamberlain, for your report. Now we'll hear from our uh, health authority, Dr. Victor Trevino. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Dr. Victor Trevino, Health Authority for the city of Laredo. We're reporting 844 deaths today from COVID-19. And as always, our praise to the families of those who have lost. As we begin to move forward into the summer months, we're currently going to the planning and preparation process, both with our state and federal partners on the event of inevitable changes that our community will be faced, not just from COVID related issues, but from mitigation with the bridges reopening for more migrants, record high inclement weather, and addressing our medically underserved environment. But however, there is one thing that we reinforced that was reinforced by the pandemic, which is still not over, is that our community, we need to stay resilient and protective in order to protect not only our individual health, but also our public health. And now, now this is with beginning with vaccination and a large amount of Laredoans, about 65.7, 8% and 12 and above have been fully vaccinated. And even though this is how pacing the state percentage of 46%, we're still not at herd immunity, which is a minimum believed to be around 70 to 75% and can be higher depending on the amount of variants in the community, which we're looking at very closely. I continue to plead with every patient and parent that to speak to their children that are 12 and up to get vaccinated as soon as possible. And uh, this is especially as we're seeing the increase across Texas of the Delta B 1.617.2 variant that was first discovered in India. And we're monitoring this situation closely. And this variant is more contagious and causes more severe illness, accounting for 2% of the previous weeks and is now accounting for 10% of the cases in our southwestern region. Now, this is uh, complemented with the most recent studies that analyzed over COVID-19 recovered patients, showing that nearly a quarter of recovered, recovered COVID-19 patients had at least one COVID-19 condition or symptom 30 days or more prior after their initial diagnosis. We're also encouraging all eligible age groups to take, to get their advantage, to take care, advantage of our vaccine supplies now, because we don't know what impact the bridge openings will have on our vaccine inventories. Very important. Or in Espanol. Buenas tardes, Dr. Victor Treviño, Autoridad de Salud de la Ciudad de Laredo. Hoy estamos informando 844 muertes por COVID-19. Y como siempre, nuestras oraciones a las familias de aquellos que hemos perdido. A medida que comencemos a avanzar hacia, hacia nuestros meses de verano, actualmente estamos atravesando el proceso de planificación y la preparación, tanto con nuestros socios estatales como federales, sobre los desafíos inevitables que nuestra comunidad enfrenta, no solo por problemas relacionados con el COVID, 
sino también por los problemas de apertura, el clima propicio y la mejora de nuestros entornos médicamente desatendidos. Eso es nada más para nombrar a algunos. Sin embargo, si hay algo que se vio reforzado por la pandemia, uh, que aún no ha terminado, es que, la, que como comunidad nuestra debemos mantenernos resilientes y proteger no solo a nuestra salud individual, sino a nuestra salud pública. Comenzando con la vacunación y una gran cantidad de laredenses, el 65.78% de 12 años o más, han sido completamente vacunados, que es lo más alto, el, que el más alto que el porcentaje de Texas, que está el 46%. Pero sin embargo, todavía no estamos en la inmunidad escuchada, que se cree que como mínimo es alrededor de 70 a 75% y puede llegar al 80, 90 por ciento, dependiendo de la cantidad de variantes en nuestra comunidad en este momento. Sigo suplicando a todos los padres con los que he hablado que hagan y hablen con sus hijos mayores de 12 años, que se vacunen lo más antes posible, especialmente porque estamos viendo un aumento en Texas de la variante Delta que se descubrió por primera vez en la India. Estamos siguiendo de cerca esta situación, ya que este variante es más contagioso y causa más enfermedad grave y representa el 2% de las semanas anteriores. Y ahora representa el 10% de casos en nuestra región suroeste. También alentemos a niños y adultos a vacunarse ahora, porque no sabemos el impacto que tendrá la apertura del puente en nuestra cadena de suministro. Ese es mi reporte. Gracias. Thank you, Dr. Treviño, for your report. And I do see our mayor, Mayor Pete Sines. Would you like to say a few words as well? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Norad. And thank you all for joining us uh, today. Again, like all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one brief uh, mention, I guess. Uh, you know, we've heard that uh, the U.S., uh, the Biden administration has, has forwarded. 1.35, I believe, 1.35 million vaccines uh, to Mexico, and we've heard from the Mexican officials that those vaccines would be used on, on the border. Uh, based on the reports that I've heard recently through the uh, news media and through the channels here, uh, uh, I, I heard that only uh, four ports, basically, uh, Reynosa, Juarez, Mexicali, and Tijuana, would be getting those vaccines. Uh, so that prompted a, a quick uh, question or inquiry to uh, the uh, Mexican officials, in particular, uh, Consul General uh, Juan Carlos Mendoza, and I had asked and she's connected with the higher ups in Mexico. And of course, also I spoke to our congressman and others, uh, but uh, I, I did get a response uh, from General Consul uh, Mendoza, basically saying that you no, know, would be getting uh, some vaccines, I think to the tune of 11,000 vaccines. And I know he's working with the county chief, uh, Landin in particular, to also you know, obtain another 10,000 some way to vaccinate some of the um, of the people uh, in the uh, in the maquila industry and the, the trucking industry and then others advancements towards that end. Uh, but obviously, my concern is 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 uh, we need uh, no Laredo ones uh, to to get vaccinated, especially in light of hopefully the, you know, the bridge restrictions lifting and and the full you know, opening of the bridge, uh, the more people vaccinated in the entire region. Uh, luckily, our numbers as, as being reported today are, are very good, extremely good. Of course, we need to, to always be mindful that we need you know, everyone to get vaccinated uh, as soon as possible. And so, so that's really my concern. Uh, we do plan to have an agenda item this coming Monday at city council meeting to discuss a little further uh, whatever Vaccines are being uh, given, donated, sold to Mexico. Uh, we, as a border community, uh, would, would ask the, the Mexican government uh, through the proper channels uh, to uh, to favor the border, especially uh, like they did with the uh, Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Uh, but it's my understanding now that, that through Pfizer, I think there's there's another uh, consideration of more vaccines ending up in Mexico. And if that's the case, we're saying, please consider no Laredo because uh, 
that may have a, you know, an impact too on, on the bridge opening. So, and, uh, and obviously we need to uh, push as much as we can to get those, uh, bridges open, you know, sooner or later. Uh, my understanding is along those lines that, that hopefully, uh, we're, again, we've been hopeful since months and months, uh, but now I hear that possibly July 4th may be that day where, or, or shortly before July 4th where the, uh, the bridges will be open. And if that's the case, we need more people in Oladella vaccinated just out of prudence and, and common sense uh, uh, and, and for the protection of the entire region here. So that's basically my report in Spanish. Uh, sí, buenas tardes a todos ustedes. Gracias uh, a mis condolencias como siempre a las familias y personas uh, queridas de las personas que han fallecido. Uh, uh, brevemente un reporte sobre las vacunas uh, que no que no ha recibido Nuevo Laredo. Uh, escuché y sabemos que la administración Biden ha, ha reportado que un millón treinta millones de vacunas uh, han sido enviados a México y, y por los medios me di cuenta que nomás ciertos uh, municipios, ciudades uh, iban a recibir esas vacunas. Uh, escuché que Reynosa, Juárez, Mexicali, Tijuana iban a recibir estas vacunas y, y cuando lo escuché uh, dije, pues, ¿por qué no, no, no hablaró también? Nos, nos conviene a nosotros que más gente no hablaró también se vacune, uh, especialmente porque me imagino que tiene impacto, aunque no nos han dicho todavía las, las métricas, la, las condiciones, por qué no se han abrido y cómo van progresando. Nadie sabe eso, nomás ahí en Washington y Canadá y México. Pero, pero siempre dice que es, es mira, que está conectado al, al COVID. So, entre más gente vacunada en Oladero, me imagino que es, hay más oportunidad, más chance de que se abran más, más pronto, más rápido. Y... y uh, y, y al escuchar esto me, me comuniqué con nuestro con, congresista y también especialmente el, el señor embajador, el cónsul general uh, Juan Carlos Mendoza, que, no, que me respondió y me dijo que, que sí, que, eh, que el doctor González ahí de Nuevo Laredo le había dicho que pensaban recibir 11.000 vacunas uh, de Johnson Johnson de, de esas de ese millón punto treinta y cinco vacunas eh, que iban a recibir eh, y le dije que pues que gracias pero hay que seguir pidiendo eh, eh, porque pues once mil es un número bueno y se agradece eh, pero no logro está mucho más grande en población y se requieren muchas más vacunas eh. y el señor Corso me dijo también que está trabajando con, con el condado con el, el jefe eh, Landí también en, en conseguir diez es mi uh, vacunas también para la industria de las maquilas y la industria aquí de, de del puerto de Laredo y, y Nuevo Laredo también todo eso se agradece pero sabemos bien que se va a requerir mucho más vacunas de Nuevo Laredo aunque nuestros números se ven muy bien muy positivos todo uh, vamos progresando bien uh, pero uh, uh, la, la ciencia común, digo, el, el bienestar de nosotros es entre más gente se vacune, pues mucho mejor para todos, especialmente la región. Y, y queremos también que la gente no hable y, y esa región tiene que estar bien protegida para, para también uh, que puedan cruzar sin, sin problema. Y también, o, ojalá también ya al levantarse estas restricciones, puedan, los que no se hayan vacunado allá puedan pasar para acá también. Uh, y, y vacunarse aquí también porque no hay condiciones de, de que pidan de dónde nacieron uh, o cosas de esas. Uh, bueno, y es, es mi reporte. Gracias. Estoy aquí para contestar las preguntas si, si acaso hay unas. Muy amable. Gracias. Thank you, Mayor, for, for your report. And um, we do have our city manager, Mr. Robert, he's also on the line, but only for, for questions as well. And, and we do have a few questions, so let's get to those first. The first one is from Judith Rayo, and it reads, Dr. Trevino or maybe Mr. Chamberlain, when the bridges do open, how will you segregate who is getting vaccinated here locally and from Mexico if they use a local address? Yeah, I can sorry, definitely I can... take a... 
um, a crack at that first and let the community know that we'll never segregate anybody. And we do want to ensure that when information is being provided to any international person that will be acquiring vaccine in our community, that they are able to provide their home address. That information can be recorded and cataloged into the MTRAC2 system provided by DSHS. Yes, I can comment on that too. Although we know we're going uh, to encounter many, many challenges in the near future, and this is one of them. And uh, there's several tools we can use. And uh, this is to get an idea of where we are locally, because uh, if we get people vaccinated that are coming in as migrants or tourists, this might skew our numbers of the amount of people that we have vaccinated locally. So we can use one of the tools such as uh, rolling averages of what vaccine we have done in the past. So this is something that we're monitoring closely and this will give us uh, some idea of, of where we are locally versus not inputting the other vaccines into our, our uh, number of people that are vaccinated. Um, this is, uh, these are the things that we are also uh, uh, looking at and uh, We'll, we'll keep on informing the public as we get more information. And specifically, if I can add on to that also for any um, refugee, migrant or immigrant that is coming into the country, they do have a sponsor that provides them an address for their final destination. And since the final destination is going to be their point of living, that information is being used to catalog their specific data to put them into the community or the zip code where they will be affiliated for their fully vaccinated or partially vaccinated status. Thank you. Thank you to both um, for that information. Um, there is a follow up uh, question. Even in a couple of days, is the city prepared and is the bridge protocol finalized? Not sure. City of Laredo will be to ensure that vaccine and testing will be readily available for the northbound traffic. That vaccine and testing cannot be mandated or required for individuals that are coming into our country um, as per the the laws and the the orders that have been provided. But rest assured. for any international travel, traveler coming into the city of Laredo. I, I'll also add to that, Noraida. Uh, we do meet weekly with our federal partners, CBP and Border Patrol. And this is where we get updates and we share our concerns and they also tell us the plans so we can work together and better uh, for our community. So this is where it, that's done every Friday. One more thing I'd like to add to that. Uh, yes, uh, identification is very important and all the measures that will be placed, but the existence of disease will trigger out measures that we need to do, uh, control measures. So uh, until we identify the existence of disease, then we would uh, trigger off the control measures. Thank you so much. The next question is from Brenda Camacho and it reads, have any variants been detected in our city or in our county? And, and I may remind all of you to please do it in English and in Spanish. I'll go ahead and start off by saying um, in English first um, that variants, of course, every single one of of a per, any person who has experienced COVID-19 has a specific variant, a specific form. But that does not mean that their specific form or their specific variant is of concern. Has there been any variants of concern that have been reported to us here at Laredo Health? There has not been any variants of concern that has been reported to us here at Laredo Health. I know there is a follow-up as if we're still sending out samples. We at Laredo Health, I can share that as of yesterday, we only had two persons come into the, to the health department to get COVID testing. And specifically, the Texas Department of State Health Services requires criteria that you have to meet in order to submit your test for variant testing. So if those two samples don't meet 
the the criterion, we can't submit those. And since there's still there's such a low number of persons coming into Laredo Health, we haven't had samples that are meeting the criteria. But that doesn't mean that other providers who are testing are able are not able to send um, their testing their COVID tests for variant testing. So that information has been pushed out to providers as to the criteria, and we will push that out again to providers. So in Espanol, um, todas las personas que, han, se, que se han contagiado con COVID tienen una variante, pero esa variante no está, todos los variantes no están peligrosos como algunos que están identificados por el CDC. Y eh, hasta el momento, el Departamento de Salud del Estado de Texas y el CDC no no han avisado a nosotros sobre una variante a, a nosotros aquí el departamento de salud de la red que okay, un variante que está peligroso que está aquí circulando en nuestra comunidad a, aparte nosotros aquí en el departamento de salud si seguimos agarrando personas que están haciendo la, la prueba de COVID-19, pero están muy bajos los números ahorita y hay un, unos requisitos que necesitamos cumplir para mandar o enviar los muestras de COVID-19 para um, variant testing. Y en este momento, por la volumen y que no están llegando con los requisitos, nosotros no estamos Um, mandando, pero vamos a seguir mandando los que um, están, um, that they're meeting the criteria. Dr. T, I don't know if you'd like to add anything else to that. Basically, that is uh, the information and we have to just be aware of uh, the tools that we have. And uh, um, like I did mention, uh, the, the control measures will be triggered off. Uh, and as, as we identify variants, we'll deal with them. But uh, Uh, as we speak, the, the vaccines are the ones that cover most of the variants. And if people do get infected with a variant and they're vaccinated, they should be protected to a degree that will not uh, require hospitalization or it would cause severe disease. Thank you to both. Um, there is a, another question from uh, Brenda Camacho and it reads, has Curative opened up an additional vaccine kiosk, or is it only at Independence Park? Regarding the city operation, there hasn't been an additional kiosk that has been opened up. There was a pilot program that occurred at the Father Magnaville Park. Unfortunately, they weren't able to reach the volume that they were looking for. And we are, conti are, we are continuing our conversations with Curative and providing vaccines at the Bridge One northbound pedestrian area. Not yet but potentially uh, an operation that will occur in the future. Thank you. The next question is from Javier Amieva. Dr. Treviño, las personas vacunadas están protegidas contra las variantes mencionadas en alguna forma? Sí, uh, muy buena pregunta. Las vacunas protegen, generalmente son de amplio espectro y protegen a los variantes, en contra de los variantes. Y por eso es muy importante que se vacunen las personas porque aunque sean infectados con variantes, eh, el nivel de protección brinda una, una protección que evita enfermedad severa y también evita hospitalización. Así es que sabemos que va a haber más variantes. Eso es lo que los virus hacen normalmente. Sufren mutaciones y cambian de... Cambian de de su composición genética, pero la vacuna, afortunadamente, las vacunas que tenemos disponibles uh, cubren los variantes. Y si hay una enfermedad de, de breakthrough que llamamos rompimiento, que sale, sale la enfermedad a pesar de la vacuna, uh, la persona que está vacunada, aunque sufra infección del variante, va a estar protegida de, en contra de enfermedad severa o de hospitalización. Thank you, Dr. T. The next question is also from Javier Amieva, and it's um, directed to our mayor. Um, Alcalde Sainz, ¿qué preparativos o reglas estarían pendientes de cumplir para que los puentes reabri reabrieran posiblemente el 4 de julio, como usted mencionó? Javier, para mí ha sido un misterio eso. El criterio no, no, no se ha explicado uh, específicamente, nada más que hay un enlace, hay una conexión. Al COVID-19, es todo lo que 
que yo entiendo de eso, va. Ya, ya he hecho la pregunta varias veces, pero nunca he recibido una respuesta específica que llegando a este nivel de protección se va a abrir, nada. Y ustedes en los medios a lo mejor saben más que uno, va. Pero para que estés haciendo la pregunta, creo yo que no, no hay esa información. ¿eh? Nos estamos con la esperanza de que, que se van a abrir, que las restricciones van a ser uh, retiradas y uh, lo más pronto posible. Y, y ojalá que para el día antes o, o el día 4 de julio estamos esperando. Es todo lo que puedo decirte, Javier. Gracias. Thank you, Mayor. The next question is from Juan Rodriguez and it reads, um, California and Nueva York ya eliminaron todas las restricciones sanitarias al llegar al 70% de vacunados. ¿Podría esto ocurrir en Laredo y en Texas? Right now, uh, it's a voluntary situation that we have here. And the more a percentage of people that are vaccinated, the better. But uh, we have to proceed with caution. And uh, it is uh, very important that uh, people that are vaccinated know that they're protected to the degree we have said. People that are not vaccinated can still infect each other. Vaccinated, non-vaccinated, and non-vaccinated can infect each other. So there will be the, the, the problem if we don't have the majority of people vaccinated the non-vaccinated people can still cause still cause the the, the continuance of, of the pandemia. So, uh, and this uh, this population is now at this point in Laredo, it's mostly children and adolescents. So, it's very important to get all of our population vaccinated so we don't have the continuance of this pandemia, at least here locally. But uh, that is the thing we exactly don't know exactly when we would. Uh, relieve all the restrictions. But at this point, until we get a great majority of adolescents and children vaccinated, that is when we can uh, probably uh, talk about this. On Espanol, ¿cuándo se van a retirar las, uh, las uh, reglas o las, las uh, condiciones de usar el tapabocas? Personas que tengamos vacunadas porque aún personas no vacunadas pueden infectarse uno con otro. Así es que aunque estemos la gran porcentaje de, de población vacunada, ellos que, que no están vacunados pueden continuar de propagar la pandemia. Y eso es una cosa que nos preocupa, ¿verdad? Porque tenemos que saber que, que al avanzar a, a una vacunación más más en grande, más entera. Ahora, actualmente la, la, las, los reglamentos y las condiciones están voluntarias y es responsabilidad personal y también las entidades privadas tienen el derecho de, de poner sus reglas en sus negocios. Pero para qué día va a ser retirado totalmente esto va a depender mucho en la cantidad de personas que tengamos localmente vacunadas aquí. Thank you, Dr. Trevino. There is one more question from Brenda Camacho. Um, it reads, has the vaccine tourism promotion started? And if so, how many people that are traveling from Mexico and Laredo have received a vaccine? I know it has started, but we not necessarily are keeping track of how many people are coming in. That is correct. That data is not being captured as these individuals or these persons that are coming into the to the country to the Laredo are going to multiple different locations to be able to acquire their vaccine. Thank you. One, one good explanation about and, and, and Robert can speak to that. My understanding is is that uh, the flights from Mexico City to Laredo have been full and now. It, it, it's occasion for us to, uh, you know, to actually place in, in effect uh, two, two additional flights. So we have flights now Mondays, I believe Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. Is that correct, Robert? Yes, sir. I think, I think you're correct in that. And, and yeah, that's that we are seeing the effects of, of what uh, our Mexican counterparts flying in.
All right. Thank you to both. Um, Brenda, if you do have any more questions about our program on the tourism um, program, please let us know on the vaccine tourism and we will be able to to send you more information on that. I don't see any other questions here from the media, um, but that will be the conclusion of our COVID-19 media briefing um, and our information again. Um, continue to stay safe uh, and have a great day.